Outside of YouTube and making indie game videos, I enjoy gardening too, and I never would have anticipated that a turnip could be this dastardly, this brazen in his disregard for societal structure. A rutabaga maybe, but a cute little turnip? While a relatively short game at around 3-4 to four hours, what Turnip Boy commits tax evasion achieves in that time is strange, whimsical, and frankly, quite charming. Hey guys, it's Cody with Indie Game Pulse. If you want to find the newest and best indie games and hear genuine reviews from an indie game fanatic like yourself, click subscribe and the notification bell to make sure you don't miss another video. Turnip Boy Commits Tax Evasion is a light-hearted adventure game that takes place in a vibrant, pixel art world devoid of any humans. The first thing you'll notice when you're playing this game is that there is a big focus on interacting with the other veggies and fruits around the town regardless of whether you like their scent or taste. From lemons to blueberries to carrots to Annie the Exploring Avocado, there are so many cute veggies to discover and befriend, and even a few non-vegetable members of the community like the abrasive Mac. These conversations are filled with cheeky puns, and the characters are just adorable, as are many of your enemies that you'll encounter, from standard snails and worms to rabbits and deer. It's just silly that these cute animals are the enemies, but really to vegetables they are pretty menacing. So the title of the game should give you a pretty good idea of the predicament in which we find our main character, Turnip Boy. He is seemingly at the end of his lawless road, and the greenhouse which he calls home is being seized by the Mayor Onion for failure to pay property taxes. But just like Mayor Onion, there are more layers to discover in the story, and they just might make you cry. I'm just kidding about the crying part. Again, this game is light and humorous. But as he seizes the greenhouse, Mayor Onion gives Turnip Boy an opportunity to work off his debt by being his errand boy and fetching items and tools to bring back from the far reaches of the known world. Certain areas of the map will be gated until you've completed certain tasks or found an item or weapon to help bypass obstacles, so the story is pretty linear, although you will discover some side stories and missions too if you choose to explore. From passing notes between fruity lovers to rekindling a lost relationship between a father potato named Tot and his son Spud, these are kind of heartwarming and fun to discover. The world is relatively small, taking only a few minutes to traverse in entirety, and consisting of four main areas branching out from the center of town in north, south, east, and west directions. There isn't a mini-map or a quest list, again probably due to the fact that you can always go back to the source pretty quickly if you can't remember any details. Items you have in your inventory are available to view from the pause menu and have a short description which might jog your memory regarding what you need to do next or where to explore. The gameplay, like the story, is light, and while you do gain a sword early on, it's more helpful in opening up new areas to explore than defending your life with. While you can easily kill most enemies with just a swing or two, there isn't really a point and you can go most of the game just avoiding the enemies as they walk back and forth over their programmed path. You might think this is a downside for me, but somehow in Turnip Boy it just it works well. The game doesn't get you hung up on mastering fighting mechanics or styles, but just lets you explore and have fun. There are a few boss fights throughout the game, and I'll only show you one or two, but these bosses typically are made easier to defeat by utilizing mechanic which the game has been introducing to you lately and giving you plenty of chances to perfect. Things like watering petal bombs to activate them and then kicking them into the boss to deal massive damage. And while we're on the topic of introducing new mechanics, I would really put this game in the exploration puzzler category more than anything. Turnip Boy Commits Tax Evasion is always introducing new hurdles to overcome and puzzles to solve in order to progress, from figuring out in which order you need to kick a section of bombs, to later using portals to transport yourself and bombs. The game stays interesting by constantly teaching you something new, and I really enjoyed that. No one aspect overstayed its welcome or felt like it was dragged on just to elongate the playtime, but each gave you ample time to fully explore and discover everything that each area has to find. And you don't have to find everything if you don't want to. There are diaries and small laughable stories strewn about everywhere, and while I enjoyed taking a moment to read and understand them, it might not be for everyone. There are a few items that you can collect throughout your time in this charming world, from new hats that you'll be given for helping a friend, to various government and personal documents that you can either read or rip up. The choice is yours, but also not. 
Again, you can check the status of both collections in the pause menu, where you can also change which hat you're wearing. My favorite was probably the explorer's hat because I want to wear one in real life. If you reach the end of the game and haven't found every collectible and would like to continue searching, the game introduces a new mystical character that can see into the beyond and give you direct hints at where to find each item. This was a huge help for someone like me who can get a bit dense at times and might have easily spent another hour or so trying to 100% the game. Instead, it only took me another 10 minutes or maybe even less and it still left me feeling satisfied. Graphically, the game ran very well on PC, but I do want to mention the controls. On an Xbox controller, the X button brings up your item menu, allowing you to switch between equipables and check your other items too. The A button is to trip yourself, really just to dodge, but it's funny to be a clumsy turnip. And the B button uses whatever item is equipped, whether a watering can or a sword or something else. I was about three hours into the game before I realized that the right and left bumpers will quick swap between your equipables and save a lot of time going back and forth to the item menu. However, due to the pixel art nature of the game and your character's rotundness, it can be a bit difficult to tell what item is equipped if you switch this way. This along with no remappable controls on a controller is really my only major fault with the game. The only way you can see the controls for a controller are when the game shows you on screen while you're playing what each button does and it doesn't include the bumpers for swapping. You can't go to the pause menu and view them, you can only see and change the keyboard and mouse controls. This is a bit strange and I would hope that this will be patched shortly. The last thing I'll mention is the soundtrack because there's a lot of variety here and it's a lot of fun to listen to. The themes change as you move to and from each area of the map, and the music is always a great cue that you've entered a new area. It's almost always light and happy, putting a little pep in our turnip boy's step, and uses a lot of funky beats as well as some unusual sounding instruments. I don't really know what to compare the soundtrack to, but I did enjoy it in the game a good bit, and it helped especially to add atmosphere to most areas. So the question is, should you play Turnip Boy Commits Tax Evasion? I'm going to say yes, but I understand that this game may not be popular with a lot of you. It is a relatively short play, which I actually enjoy in a time where games are trying to hook me in endlessly. It's very light on strategy and skill, but what it delivers in just silliness and simplicity is quite hard to find. Turnip Boy Commits Tax Evasion sounds like it will overwhelm you with spreadsheets and tax audits, but actually pays off in dividends with a sweet and endearing adventure. I would even recommend this as a fun game for children, although they won't be able to understand the more subtle jokes and references. That's gonna do it guys, thank you very much to my 592 subscribers for your support, and I look forward to getting to know more of you soon. For more top indie game countdowns and reviews, check out the videos on your screen now, and I'll see you on the other side.